plus 5. All right? He could have just as easily wrote that in in a sentence. But, see, but then I realized after listening to some of the lectures, he said this. I can't toot my own horn. You're going to have to do that. Right. See? So now I'm, so I'm tooting this horn. Because, see, five years from 1926 is 1931. Yeah. Why five years? Well, hey, when Joshua, the son of God, appeared down here, he appeared down here 10 years after Moses left. Moses was 40 years old when he left, and Joshua appeared 10 years afterwards. So that would be Moses 50 years old when Joshua appeared down here in Egypt. See, he says he was a placeholder, you know, to be added or subtracted. Another thing is this. This age began with the day of Pentecost. Right. What's the word Pentecost mean? Wow. It means 50. Yeah. See, so it started off that way with a 50 or a principle of 5. It's got to end that way. Talking about this divine vision. See, and look, this divine vision is the end of the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled. What do you mean, 1931? No, the vision itself. Because you didn't come in here in 1931. You came in whenever you came in. But when you realized that you understood it and, and it was translated in your heart, Romans 2, 28. <coughs> Romans, Romans 2 and 28. For he is not a Jew. So you ain't a Jew no more. I mean, I mean, you're a Gentile no more. You're, he's not a Jew. No, not you. <laughs> he's not a Jew. You're not a Jew outwardly. That's what I'm trying to say. See, because I'm looking around the room. I see, I see white folks. I see black folks. I see Asian. I see, you know, Latino. You ain't a Jew outwardly. Not apparently so. But inwardly, we. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. See, you ain't, we ain't asking you to get circumcised in the flesh. We're asking you to have your heart circumcised. Right. Because it's an inward operation. Go ahead. But he is a Jew, which is one inward. Mm -hmm. And the circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of Yahweh. In other words, if you come here and sit down and you eat this vision and, and, and you let it translate you into the kingdom, and that's to say to have these veils ripped off of you, you, in other words, your time as a Gentile has been fulfilled. Because you're a spiritual Jew now. Get it? See? 2520 has translated you into a Jew. See, and now, see, that's what it really means. Because people are looking around, well, the date 1960, was that title? That ain't what it's talking about. Because, see, look, back here, yeah, it was chronological, but see, we crossed an age. We crossed the dispensation. So it has to be applied spiritually. What are you talking about? Because at the end of 2520, the Jews got their inheritance back. Look, up here in the garden, the scripture says this, and, all, and, and Adam all died. And, and Adam all made alive. But before you died in Adam, you lived in Adam. Because he was up here in the garden with no transgression happening, see? He had an empty, he was created outside of the garden and put into the garden. That was the meaning he was given an inheritance. Mm -hmm. Then he lost that inheritance. Yeah. Now here's Joshua the Messiah coming along, getting that inheritance back. Right. Here you are, man. In Adam, you lost that inheritance. But now in the end of this age, you got that inheritance back. Right. See? Right. And your time as a Gentile has been fulfilled. In other words, it is brought to an end. Yeah. Right. See? That's what it's talking about. And look, let me tell you, and see, look, just like, and see, that's what happened to the Israelites. They got their land back. See, they, the country of Israel got established, and see, and see, and they will be there until the very end. Why? Because you translated it to the kingdom. You will be there until the very end. See, and look, and oh my gosh. See, look, see, when Dr. Kelly comes on the scene, man, look, you got some, you got some fascist folks out there, you know, like Adolf Hitler and all that. See, he started. He started his reign of terror in 1930. He became chancellor of Germany yeah. in 1933. And then he ruled for, to 1945. That's 12 years. And for those 12 years, he persecuted the Jews. See? That's like saying the 12 tribes, OK? And I look, now why is he doing that? Well, look, he's, here's Satan down here. See, he's bruising the head. That's why he's got the mark 666. And he doesn't understand anything. His, his whole thing is carnal. He's looking at it physically. Yeah. Looking at it fleshly, right. literally, yeah. see? And so therefore, just like back here, he's looking for the Messiah back here. But he pulled a trick on it. Joshua and the son of Nun appeared down here instead of coming in yeah. through the loins of a woman. Yeah. See, but the Pharaoh was out here killing all the boy babies. Yeah. Yeah. Two and right. under, right. correct? Right. Yeah. Killing two and under. Right. Joshua was fulfilling that. He had to come through the loins of a woman because he's got to fulfill what was told to Eve. She would be saved inside of childbearing. But he avoided Herod's purge. And Herod had to kill all those babies in Bethlehem. Two and under, right. correct? Here's Dr. Kelly. He's getting a vision down here. Hitler, we see with, with that satanic say, say, mind, he's looking for the Jews, natural and physical. But the age has changed. The dispensation has changed. He's a spiritual Jew now. He's killing up. Dr. Kelly, he's got the vision 1931. Can't you see he's trying to 
to kill the Jews too. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. There ain't no difference. There's got to be a repetition. If it ain't that way, then we need to go home and get out of here. This is just a bunch of hope. And he is the seventh day. Do I got time for that? I'm going to have five minutes. Give me uh, Daniel uh, 725, King James, Holy Name 525, I think. Quickly. Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Uh -huh. And shall wear out the sons of the Most High. Uh -huh. And think to change the times and laws. Right. And shall be given into his hand unto a time, times, and dividing of times. Uh -huh. Times, times, and the dividing of time. Now, what's a time? See, time is one of the old English expressions. It means a year. Okay? Now, in Yahweh's timetable, a year, prophetically speaking, is 360 days. 12 months in a year, 30 days in a prophetic month. 12 times 30, 360 days. All right? So that's what a time is. 360 days. All right? Now, I don't have to leave it like that. I can, I can elaborate if I want to. I can say, hey, this is 12 months. That's right. It's the same as 12 months. That's right. I can even go and say, just simply, one year. Times. Because it's plural. Just two times whatever it is up here. Two times 360 is 720 days. Two times 12 months, 24 months. Two times one year, two years. Dividing a time or half a time is just half what it is up here. All right, 180 days. All right, six months. One half year. All right. Now this is a matter of simple addition because you got what? You got 1260 days here. That's right. All right, you got 24, well, rather 42, mm -hmm. 42 months. That's right. All right, and you got three and a half years. Right. All right, it's all the same thing. That's See, right. it's all the same thing. I used to, I used to make this analogy. Like, if I borrow twenty dollars from you, you give me a twenty dollar bill, I come back. If I give you two tens, would that be all right? Yeah. If I give you twenty ones, would that be all right? Yeah. How about four fives? Why? Because it's the same thing. Okay, quickly, Daniel, the twelfth chapter, uh, last chapter, Daniel, the twelfth chapter, maybe around. Uh, uh, you say 11, okay, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, this is good. But the daily sacrifice is taken away. Well, yeah. Okay, we're going to start with um, Daniel 12 and 11. All right. And from the time that the daily sacrifice uh -huh. was taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. A thousand two hundred and ninety days. Why? Well, see, we just showed the graph up here. See, twelve hundred and ninety days is no more than twelve hundred and sixty mm -hmm. plus thirty. That's right. That's twelve hundred and ninety days. That says the daily sacrifice is taken away. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. We showed you that twelve twelve sixty is the same as three and a half years. All right, plus 30, that would be 33 and a half years. Mm -hmm. In principle, see, yep. Yep. in principle, 1290 and 33 are the same thing in principle, because 33 and a half years of Joshua's life, right. after his death, burial, resurrection, that's when the daily sacrifice was taken away, right? Because he was the sacrifice yeah. of right. sacrifices. Right. Okay, right. read. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Thirteen hundred and thirty-five days. What are you talking about? Look, we saw the back. See Daniel back here. He's in the post diluvian age back here that's under the dispensational law. He's in a vision because it was talked about. He's in eternity. And see, eternity is not a state of continued time. It's, it's, it's a state of endlessness. Because see, time begins and ends within eternity. Right. See, and so now he's up in here talking about Daniel, and he's looking at the thing because he was already mentioned that Daniel saw things, right. you know, he wasn't allowed to say or mention, so, which means that he's looking back at the thing, and he's looking all the way forward at the thing, and he's looking down forward. He's coming down, and he says, oh, well, at, at 1290 days, well, the sacrifice, daily sacrifice is going to be taken away. Uh -huh. But now he's looking past the cross. Right. And he said, well, blessed is he who waited to the 1335. Yeah, right. Why? Uh -huh. Because when he begins to sound his trumpet, right. the glory of Yahweh, the purpose that's of Yahweh right. would be about finished. That's right. Be about finished. Yeah. Be about finished. Yeah. Why? What do you mean? Hey, mm -hmm. see, 1290 days minus 1335. 45. See, that gives you 45 years. What are you talking about? How long did I found the preach? 45, 45 years. What? He is, see, Daniel, oh, quickly. The seventh day, who quickly, Revelations, quickly. 
Because John, remember, John is looking back on the same. Yeah. Not only is he confirming Moses, he's confirming all the prophets. Why? Because all the prophets are preaching the things that Moses wrote in the law. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's got to confirm them all. Yeah. So when John is, I'm, go ahead quickly, because I'm out of time. Revelation This is Revelations 10 and 7. And in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, uh -huh. when he shall begin to sound, uh, when he begin to sound, read. The mystery of Yahweh should be finished. It should be finished. Why is John saying that? Because he's looking back and he sees Daniel back yeah. here. And Daniel talking about the 1290, the 1335. See, look, Dr. Kimmy said this. And this is, I hear people say this all the time. Well, you know, I understand what Moses wrote, but I don't quite understand what John's writing. Mm. Well, let me tell you something. Mm. That simply means you don't understand the whole thing. Right. <laughs> because John is confirming Moses. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. See, now if you don't understand how John is confirming Moses, then you really don't know Moses. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just the plain fact of it. See. Right. Because this, see, this is a con see. Look, Doctor, and, and, and if you don't understand these two, then you sure ain't gonna understand what Doctor Kelly's saying. Because yeah. his vision encompasses the whole thing. That's right. That's right. See, and he is that seventh thing. That's right. He is. I mean, he's the one that. That I mean, and look, and I know people are trying to worship him and all that, you know, and, and that's something he never wanted. Because right. he said, that ain't my job to be right. worshipped. I, I didn't come here to die for you. That was right. already right. done. Right. That was already right. I'm just here to blow the horn to let right. you know what's up. That's right. See, but you're going to sit up here, hey, but I'll tell you something. You sit up here and go around talking about, well, I'm, I'm saying the name of Dr. Kennedy. All you're going to do is, is just going to die. Right. Right. And you're going to yeah. fail. Right. And you're going right. to fail miserably. Right. Right. All right? Until you come, you know, and, and look, it's just best. You know, and I think I'm done. I know I'm done. The time is out. <laughs> I, I say this to my folks at home. If we would just simply follow the breadcrumbs that I found the left, right. you know, I, you know, I said, just the breadcrumbs, right. it would lead us to the most profound things in the universe. Right. Yeah. Simply explain. Yeah. Because there's no such thing as deep. The only thing something is deep to you is because it hasn't been explained yet. Yeah. But once it's explained to you in its utter simplicity, it remains deep no more. Yeah. Why? Because now yeah. it's translated into you. You have become a son. You yeah. have become part of it, see? That's why Yahweh wrote me and I say, he said, look, my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. Why? Because we said that I was under the law. Mm -hmm. It was impossible for, your th for his thoughts to be your thoughts because you, you weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, on this side, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is, is in you. You translate into yeah. the kingdom. Now, his yeah. thoughts are now your thoughts. Yeah. His ways are now your ways. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And that's all we, and that's all we, that's all we want to say here. Look, maybe one more scripture, and I'll be done. I promise. I promise. Romans, but I, I got to say, because this is a lesson I learned. Romans 12, quickly. 12 and, uh, uh, uh. No, 12 and, uh, 9. Uh. No, I'll start with uh, 14, because I'm, I'm out of time, so I need to do this, but I just this, is, this is Romans 12 and 14. Bless them that persecute you. Now, bless them that persecute you. you know, and I know I used to be real good, but folks used to come here talking to me, and I'd get up behind them. <laughs> I'd ring them. I got to go videotape. Believe me. I, did this, I ring this guy so bad once <laughs> that he went to the board of trustees and complained about it. And they put it in their minutes. They said, well, you people in Ontario need to treat folks a little bit. I said, well, when they start preaching the truth, we will. <laughs> but then I had to think because I ran across this scripture quickly. Read. And this is a lesson I'm trying to learn here. Bless them that persecute you. Mm -hmm. Bless and curse not. Read. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Read. And weep with them that weep. Uh -huh. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, mm -hmm. but condescend to men of low estate. Mm -hmm. Be not wise in your own conceit. Read. Recompense to no man evil for evil. No, you don't, you don't, you don't fight fire with fire. You fight fire with water. Mm -hmm. That's how you put it out. You add fire and stuff, you're just going to make it even bigger and worse. Mm -hmm. See, read. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Read. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Mm -hmm. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, mm -hmm. but rather give place unto wrath. Mm -hmm. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith Yahweh. That's what I had to learn, because I thought I had to get up on the floor behind right. somebody and get bit. No, see, no, all I got to do is preach the truth. That's, that's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I ain't got to bag on nobody. I ain't got to beat on nobody. I ain't got to do none of that. I ain't got to say, oh, you a liar, you wrong. I ain't got to do none of that damn stuff. All I got to do is preach the pattern. That's more than enough. Please. 
Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, mm -hmm. feed him. I'm going to feed you, even though you, you don't agree with me. I'm going to still feed you. If he be first, give him drink. I'm going to give you something to drink. I ain't got lots of poison. I'm going to some good stuff. Yeah. For, in, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. What coals of fire are you talking about? Right. Wisdom, intelligence, now yeah. love, beauty, yeah. justice, foundation, yeah. power, and strength. That's the only thing that's going to purge somebody yeah. of the idiot yeah. nonsense yeah. that's going on. Yeah. Right. The only way. Uh. Sitting up trying to beat somebody up, beat it out, that ain't going to happen. Yeah. Right. You got to preach the truth to them really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Be not overcome of evil, uh -huh. but overcome evil with good. That's, uh, that, that says, it says, overcome evil with good. That would yeah. preach the truth. Yeah. Yeah. I see it all the time because I look in their faces on the floor and, and certain things I'm sitting up talking about, I know they don't understand because I can see in their faces. I'm like, you know, they sit, they sit, they sit up there. Beat somebody on the head with a bottle. Here's a drink of water. Let me show you something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Show you some real stuff. Yeah. Show you some real food. Yeah. Right? Here's some nourishment. Right. And I'll let and see, and I'll let Yahweh do the rest. Yeah. That's all you can do. Right. I ain't gonna try. And that's the lesson I've had to learn the last few years. Yeah. And I got no video. Hey, I'm savage as supposed to believe it. <laughs> believe it. I can do it too. People know me well enough. I can, I'll get you. Right. But then I had to realize that now is that. Is that Jermaine the Savage? Is that, how is that really helping somebody? Yeah, yeah. You know, you got to preach the truth. You got to yeah, tell it yeah, to them. Yeah. You got to explain it to them. Yeah. And let Yahweh do the thing for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you much. Hallelujah. There are a couple things, um, just kind of housekeeping things. Um, one, again, <laughs> there are people that uh, may have been brought over here from the hotels. Okay? If you who uh, need a ride back, uh, make it known, and others that have extra room in your cars kind of wait around for a little while after class just to make rides available so that people can get back. That'll help because the shuttle does not run back there at night. Okay? So you may have come over on the shuttle, but they're telling us you're not getting back on the shuttle. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to make that clear. And, um, uh, I know that we have a section of chairs over here. I also know that the visibility over there to the charts and so forth, you can't see a lot of things. And uh, we, there are seats available. Anybody that wants to sit where you can see these charts, these charts are very incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And it's just like in the Bible it says, without a prophetic vision, the people perish. You need to see this. So... Uh, Feel free to go ahead and move. You can do that now. That's fine. Come on up here. Grab a seat where you can see. Um, let me see the hands of anybody in here where there's an actual spare seat. See, there's a bunch of them. And then all these up here and so forth. So you'll want to come on up and see. Please do it. Okay? Um, also, um, I heard that there are more of the handouts. They're gone. That's what I thought earlier. Okay. Um, who did not get a handout? One? Just just one person? Okay. Well, we can certainly make copies. A copy. <laughs> at some point. However, we don't have a copy machine right here. And we're going to try to do it anyway. Tomorrow. Okay? All right. Um, the other thing I want to do is review some of the things that are in the handout. I'm not going to review all the lectures uh, because we've done that already pretty well. But I want you to know a little bit about what's available in the handout. Um, there is a welcoming letter here from me. You can read that. There's a statement of the context of what the lectures this lecture series is about. And I've noted here that Yahweh set up a purpose. And this is before he created anything. He did it with a purpose. He didn't just make a creation, well, and said, stand back and say, well, let's see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> he set it up with an express intent. And he did it in an incredibly organized fashion. He had a pattern, structure, within which everything was made, and going to function and operate. That's a pattern. We'll talk about that. He had a plan, which is the process by which he is going to proceed to carry out different operations within that pattern 
in order to achieve his purpose. And we've been discussing how he has operated on down through the ages and the dispensations in order to carry out his purpose. And these are ages and dispensations, just like a person grows up from infancy, you know, like the childlike innocence in the garden. Well, man began there with that childlike innocence and had to go through various stages of development. And Yahweh has now brought us to a stage or an age where finally we can have a direct spiritual relationship with Yahweh. And we have to be able to develop the ability to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that is a product of what he provides uh, within us or what he makes happen within us by his Holy Spirit. And we will then go on and have even a greater more perfect relationship with him in ages that are still to come after this. Okay? Um, now, there's a set of questions here to answer, and I'm just going to read some of the questions, and you ask yourself, do you know the answer to these questions? Okay? What should we do with the time that we are given? In other words, with our life. We were created with a purpose. What's it for? Seek Yahweh. It is. That's the answer. We should seek Yahweh. While perhaps we might feel after him and find him, although he is not far from every one of us, for in him, what? We live, we, live, we move, and we have our being. That's right. What is eternity? It's a state of of timelessness, where there is no beginning and no ending, okay? Time, well, that's the next question. What is time? Time, what is it? Time is a measured span for the physical creation within the realm of eternity. Time has a beginning and an ending. Eternity doesn't. And if you look on the ages and dispensations chart here, you will notice that the first age is called the creative age. Everything was originally created in the realm of eternity or timelessness. Then at the transgression in the Garden of Eden, it began to operate in the realm of time. And it operates through how many ages in time? Three. Three. Three, Three in time. Yeah. The antediluvian, which means the age before the flood, in other words, between Adam and Noah, the post-Diluvian age, which means after the flood, now it's between Noah and Joshua the Messiah, the Savior, birth, life, death, burial, resurrection, and then the present kingdom age, which is an age of grace from the time that the Messiah poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost up until the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. Now there will be a universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah to everyone. To many of you, it's already come. Because if Yahshua has appeared in you, you've had the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, it will be magnified and multiplied incredibly at the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. But the fact that you have seen him now, during this time period, makes it possible for you to live in the next ages, in a state of righteousness and peace and joy. Because if you don't see him now, it will be kind of like this. If you were in a room that was pitch black, completely dark, not even the light of one match or candle, and you're, you were in there for days and days and days and days, and then all of a sudden, they turn on 1,000 watt flood lamps. What would happen? You'd be blinded, right? Can you imagine the pain to your eyes? That is what will happen at the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah for those that have not had their spiritual eyes adjusted by the light of Yahshua. And to those of you that have seen him, 
What will happen is that instead of being a blinding light that will, that will cause great pain and suffering, instead of that, that will be an incredible illumination of your mind and soul, and you will see the full beauty and magnificence of who Yahshua really is. And so you can see the difference in terms of what that is. So, time is that measured span. How did Yahweh make time? Well, the answer is he brought in the physical creation and caused routine, repetitious events to occur within the physical creation that are marked out by things such as the sun, the moon, and the stars, and so forth. And I'm not going to answer all these questions, but you get the point. If there are questions, there are answers. And all of these can be supported by what's in the Bible and so forth. How is time structured by Yahweh's pattern? That's what I want to acquaint you with a little bit, is Yahweh's pattern. This tabernacle pattern, which you see depicted right here, is the thing that explains who the Creator is. This tabernacle was not something we decided to draw here. There are 50 chapters of the Bible devoted to this pattern and its structure, its function, and the administrations that went on in it. That's a lot of book. And I know before I came in this school, I was raised as a... <coughs> Bible-believing, trained Christian. Much more so than the vast majority of Christians. I knew jack nothing about that pattern. Because people had the idea, hey, that's Old Testament. You don't need that now, you're under the New Testament. Well, let me tell you something. The New Testament is drawn out of the Old Testament. And if you want to understand anything about this Testament that you're in right now, it's drawn out of the Old Testament. You need that as a foundation, basis, and knowledge. Just like a baby is drawn from its mother, the New Testament is drawn out of the Old Testament. Okay? And this pattern is phenomenally important, and I'll describe that in a little bit more detail. Then there's other questions in here. How does Yahweh's plan operate in time like the priest operated in the pattern? Hmm, we've already seen some of that, right? How do cycles operate in the numbers, such as 7 and 49 and 490? You've seen that, right? Days, weeks, years, millennia are all operated by the same pattern. Time is set up this way. What role do the sun, the moon, and the stars play? We talked a little bit about that. How are hours, days, months, years, and millennia calculated in prophecies? That's been discussed. What are the 2300 days? We talked about that. How did Yahshua fulfill three days and three nights in the heart of the earth? We've talked about that. How did the death, burial, and resurrection fulfill his purpose? We've talked about that, but you can't exhaust that one. <laughs> what is the significance of numbers like 3, 50, and 53, 12, 60, and 25, 20? How'd you like that last lecture about the 25, 20, huh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely wonderful. That's in the pattern. Okay, right? I'll show you in a minute. When is Joshua's birthday? Guarantee it's not December 25th. In fact, I just have to tell you right now, December 25th is the birthday of the Antichrist. The Anti-Messiah. And what types of prophecies does his birthday fulfill? How do you calculate a day with Yahweh, a prophetic day, a solar day? Talked about that. How did Yahweh define day and night? Talked about that. What is a phenomenal day? When does it occur? Talked about that. What are the ages, dispensations, and covenants? And then I could also ask, what are the times of the Gentiles? Which is all related to that in the 2520, which has been discussed. Anyway, okay. Then there's a page on the tabernacle pattern. Now, this acquaints you with basic, very basic structure of the tabernacle and the numbers that are involved. Now, this tabernacle was a structure with three compartments, a most holy place, holy place, and court roundabout. The reason it was made that way was because it was a manifestation or an explanation of who the creator is. The creator is 
Yahweh, which is the proper name of God. Now, if you're not familiar with that, and the name of the Savior, Yahshua, you're not familiar with that, what I'm going to tell you right now is this. There's so much information, Google it. That's right. Yahoo it. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. But there's a whole lot more, and I'm just saying, it, 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 it's well known. Okay? In fact, I can show you his name in your King James Bible. Yeah. You know how to do that. Now, so the Creator is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one Godhead or in one embodiment. All that means is that He is one Spirit, one being, who is Spirit, and He exists in three states all together. Now, man is only recognizing Him. Usually, He doesn't even do this. But in one state. But you see, he's not limited to one state. He exists in an abstract state, which means a state that's beyond your and my comprehension. He exists in an intermediate state, which you can call shape and form, but it's not tangible or physical. And he is able to exist also in a tangible, concrete state. In other words, as a physical person, Yahshua the Messiah. And he exists in all three of those states, abstract, intermediate, and concrete, all together. That's who he is, okay? And therefore, he had a tabernacle pattern with three compartments, representing his existence in three states, a higher, intermediate, and lower state. There are seven steps in this tabernacle pattern, which represent the seven ages and seven dispensations through which Yahweh operates his, time, his, his purpose. There are nine substances that make up this tabernacle pattern, three groups of three each. Those nine substances represent what Yahweh or spirit is. And Yahweh or spirit is the sum total of nine principal divine <coughs> attributes. Now, those nine principal divine attributes are intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, beauty, love, and justice, foundation, power, and strength. Those are represented by the nine substances that went in the tabernacle, and also they're concretely manifested by the nine vessels that are in this tabernacle pattern. You, as a physical person, have nine primary physiological systems in your body. Because you're made in the image and likeness of God, or of Yahweh. And therefore, each one of your nine systems is comparable to one of those vessels and one of these attributes. Mm -hmm. Okay? We'll have to let some of the speakers explain some of this. Then there's another one. The dimensions of the tabernacle. I'll touch on this briefly. This tabernacle pattern, how long was the whole structure, including the gate and uh, all the way to the back of the, of the, of the uh, court itself? It was 150 feet. 150 feet. Now, the primary number by which Yahweh is using everything is the number 3. So divide 150 by 3, and what do you get? 50. So, here's what Yahweh did. You come right on down from the back of the gate, or the court, 50 feet. That's one-third of the distance. And that's where he placed a veil in the sixth step, right there. Okay? And that meets 50 feet to here, leaving 100 feet down here. Then, take this inner portion of the tabernacle, the two-room house, the most holy place and holy place, put within that 150-foot long courtyard. How long was this, the most holy place and holy place, together? 45 feet. Divide that by the number 3. What do you get? 15. So come right on down from the back of that uh, wall of the most holy place, one-third of the way, 15 feet, and where do you end up? Second veil again, sixth step, right? And that leaves two-thirds of the distance, which is 30 feet, 
right? From there to the door, right? Now, if it's 100 feet from the second veil to the gate, and it's 30 feet from the second veil to the door, how many feet does that leave from the door to the gate? 70 feet. Daniel prophesied there would be how many weeks until transgression was finished? 70. These 70 feet correspond exactly with those 70 weeks of the prophecy of Daniel. And now he's starting to get on how prophecy operates by time. Okay? I'm not going to go into the details, huh? But I tell you, you can break it down. It's precise. Okay? Now, then you just divide the court roundabout by three. Now, you end up with a little difficulty if you try and divide 70 by three. And you can do that. You can say it's 23 and a third. And that works in some respects, no problem. But if you look at the 70 weeks of the Daniel prophecy, it says that there would be seven weeks plus 62 weeks. Right? And then it talks about one remaining week. Now, seven weeks plus 62 weeks is how many weeks? 69. And the last week, the 70th week, stands by itself. Just like the seventh day of the creation stands by itself. Just like the seventh step in the tabernacle stands by itself. One of these ages, the first out of the seven, stands by itself and so forth. Okay? So if you take 69 and divide it by 3, what do you get? 23. Okay? And then you get into other things where you involve the prophecies like the 2300 days. Okay? Now, let's go down to the altar for just a minute. What was the dimensions around the altar? I I'm just getting a couple little things here. 30 feet, 30 feet right? Mm -hmm. Around the altar, which is how many inches? Well, let's see, 30 times 12 inches is what? 360 inches. Oh, how many degrees are in a circle? 360, right? And the priest would have to circle this altar twice a day during the morning offering and the evening offering and put blood all around the rim and the four points of the corners. Correct? Okay? Now, hold on. And I'm showing you that this is the way Yahweh set up time here. Okay? Now, so that priest operates in that tabernacle. Yahshua is the priest that operates in his creation. And he's doing everything by this pattern right here. Okay? Now, if you make a right angle at each of the corners, what is the number of degrees out of those 360 degrees? 90. 90. And how many corners are there? Four. So that's four 90s. So really, four 90 is 360. Now listen, if you're going to understand how these things work, you've got to start thinking allegorically, not analytically. And that was a major challenge for me, because I was raised as an analyst, scientific analyst, and I had to ditch my thinking. You understand what I'm saying? And learn the way Yahweh projects things, okay? And if you don't like that 490, here's a second witness. How many inches was on each side of the altar? 90. And how many sides? So that's 490s. So that's two witnesses to 490. Now, in time, how many years are in one of the cycles of time? 490. Right? Now, if you... And how many cycles of 490 can you fit within 1,000 years? Two. 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 So you can go 490 twice in 1,000 years. And the day with Yahweh is as what? 1,000 years. So Yahweh cycles around the earth, which the altar represents, a full cycle, you can consider it 360, which is like a year, but also a day is as a thousand years, so twice a day Yahweh cycles 490. Right? 
twice a day in the tabernacle, the priests cycled 490. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And there you get into the other details, some of the other details of the prophecy. Okay, that's just one little thing. Okay? <laughs> I'm trying to give you just a taste of how and why, when you understand this pattern as Yahweh has laid it down, you can understand his purpose. And without it, you're guessing. You don't know it. You're not getting a revelation. Now, there's a whole sheet here on tabernacle numbers. I'm not going to take time to read all that. What's that? Now, since everything works, in cycles of seven. And by the way, 490 is simply what? Seven seven. Seventy sevens. That's all it is. Now we just operates everything in cycles of seven. Okay? Well, the pattern has seven steps. There are seven ages. There are seven dispensations. And there are seven days of creation. Each compare. All right, turn the page. <laughs> If you think that is good, realize that Yahweh set up seven holidays with Israel called convocations. Each one of those compares perfectly with the seven steps. There are seven precepts or major principles, one each, which go along with each of those convocations. The tabernacle, again, with the seven steps. You realize there's a pattern that Yahweh used the children of Israel typically. When they went from Egypt into the wilderness, into the promised land, there's seven steps to the migration. Now, the reality of all this is the Savior, Yahshua. And Yahshua fulfilled each one of those seven steps. Okay? That's on your paper. Again, seven dispensations. And then there are seven stages that have to happen within you spiritually. Something that the Holy See, Joshua operates like the priest in the tabernacle with seven steps, and you're his temple or tabernacle. Then when he operates in your soul, he's going to take you through seven steps. <coughs> That's listed. Yeah. Now, this timeline shows you a little bit about the 490 years. A few of them. Not all of them. So I didn't acquaint you with it. Then, you want to get into the 70 weeks of prophecy? Here you go. There's a whole sheet on the 70 weeks. And there's a page which has some notes, which didn't have to be, but you see, they go into some of the things the previous speaker talked about with 2520 and some other stuff. Then there is a timeline that has some major historical events <coughs> or markers of things that Yahweh did. A page that represents how the day of the Messiah's death and his burial and resurrection were the fulfillment of all kinds of different things in prophecy about time. 2,300 days, three days and three nights, uh, things of that nature. That page and the succeeding page how Yahshua fulfills, okay? Now that ought to be enough to give you something to take home with you and think about, right? <laughs> and to come back and study, right? And when you can answer all of those questions, and when you understand all of these illustrations, I think you'll have at least a good foundation for what this teaching is about, okay? All right, one last, I think I'll leave it. I think I'll leave it at that. Um, well, I do want to do one thing. Give me Psalms 27 and 4, please. And I want to mention this. This teaching is the same identical teaching that that man, Yahshua the Messiah, who the world called Jesus Christ, the same exact thing he taught. It's not an improvement. It's not an addition. It's not a deviation. It's what he taught. It's what he had his prophets teach before him. It's what he had his apostles teach after him. And every single time, 
He brought that about by means of him showing it to someone. They never figured it out on their own, not the first one. He showed it to them. It was by vision. It was by revelation. And in 1931, which was right on time, you saw that last lecture, Yahweh brought about another <coughs> manifestation of the same vision and revelation. I didn't say another vision and revelation, did I? Dr. Kinley didn't have another vision and revelation besides the vision that Moses had, or John, or any prophets. He had the same one. And you can have the same vision and understanding or revelation. It's laid out in front of you right here. That's what this is. But really, you look at it, it's your Bible in picture form. But it's the way of explaining the Bible so that it can be revealed or understood. Okay? Now, within this teaching, there are three great secrets which are fundamental to your spiritual development. You need to get these understood thoroughly. The first is the first thing that Yahweh revealed to man that had been kept secret. And that's his name. And he revealed that name how many years from the beginning of time? From the beginning of time. 2520. 25, right? That's right. That's when the revelation comes. That's was shown in the last lecture. 2520 years from time, Yahweh revealed his name to man. Now, yeah, listen, let me say this real quick. Moses didn't name God. <laughs> God had a name long before Moses knew anything about it or anybody else. His name always was Yahweh. It's a heavenly name, an eternal name. It's not a man-made name. It's not a Hebrew name. Not in terms of like man's Hebrew name. It's a heavenly name. It existed before man ever had a language. And it expresses who he is. It means this. The one who exists and causes to exist. That's who Yahweh is. And his name is an expression of who he is. He's the one that exists throughout eternity. In other words, before anything else existed, he existed. And after anything else ceases to exist, he still exists. And he is the one that his own being or existence emanates to create other beings that exist. He's the one who exists and causes me. That's what his name means. And if you have any idea of the ramifications and significance of that, it's amazing. But the one aspect of what that means <laughs> that you and I need to get clearly understood, is that he exists as salvation. Mm -hmm. Because that's how he willed to exist. Mm -hmm. That's how he declared himself to be. He declared Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. Okay? His name was the first thing ever revealed that way. The next thing he revealed to Moses, and I'm talking about the first Bible writer, was this pattern. The third thing he revealed to Moses was his own ministry, his own fulfillment of the whole Old Testament. He showed this to Moses, the third and last vision that he had with Moses on Mount Sinai. I'm going to get one scripture on the second part, on the tabernacle pattern only, to show you that it's one of those three secrets because that is what we're focusing on to tie together this series of lectures. Psalms 27 and 4. Psalms 27 and 4. One thing I have I desired of Yahweh, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life. Now who's writing this? David. David. Yeah, Yahweh's inspiring it. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit's inspiring it. But who's penning it down? David. David. Now, David is the man to whom Yahweh gave a vision of how to build the temple. 
which was a greater and more perfect tabernacle. When David received that vision, he expressed that the way Yahweh showed it to him was in comparison with David's own physical body. He said, all these things Yahweh showed him, showed me, David, by the laying of Yahweh's hand upon me, even all of the works of this pattern. And David later expressed, he said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Right. Because he recognized that he was made by Yahweh's divine pattern as a vessel for Yahweh's spirit to operate in. And that's the way you're made. When it's revealed to you, it becomes a reality. See? So David now is expressing his eternal desire. The house of Yahweh that he wants to dwell in is not the physical temple that David built. Right? Or David gave, had the pattern to build. That's not the house. You know what the house of Yahweh is? It's his great spirit embodiment. And Yahweh's purpose is to bring all things in heaven and earth, all those that believe, in heaven and earth, together into the one body of Yahshua the Messiah. That's a spiritual embodiment. And it is called, in most Bible language, the church. Because the true church is the assembly or the body of souls that are joined unto Yahshua as the head of the body, and we are all members. And this is where you would want to dwell throughout eternity, is in the kingdom, body, glory of Yahshua the Messiah. David is expressing here, this one thing I desire of Yahweh. Go ahead. That I may dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life. Yes. To behold the beauty of Yahweh. To behold the beauty of Yahweh. What did I say will happen when the universal revelation occurs? If you've already seen him, you will see him in all his beauty and glory. Please read. Um, and to inquire in his temple. And to inquire in his temple. This body is the true temple. Go ahead. For in the time of trouble... In the time of trouble, and this is important because you all have it. I know, probably some of you here never have any trouble. In the time of trouble, David said, he will hide me in his pavilion. That means in his house, in his tent. In what? In the secret of his tabernacle. In the secret of his tabernacle. Now, if you are in the secret, if you know the secret of Yahweh's tabernacle, that's where you will be hidden from trouble. And the major thing about that secret is simply this. Yahweh makes everything operate by that pattern. And that pattern inevitably predicts this. You will go through a death, followed by a burial, Followed by a resurrection. And everybody goes through that constantly. When you lay down at night, you're in the state closest to death. You tend to cool off, so you cover up with the covers at the burial. And in the morning, you wake up, hopefully renewed and refreshed. New life. Right? That's a manifestation that... The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Yahshua, according to this pattern, operates in you. When you receive this teaching, that is the Holy Spirit, come into you. He has condescended from his higher state and come into you and me. Made himself understandable to us. That's a coming down for him. That's a death. Out of love for us. He puts his knowledge and his spirit in you. That's a burial. Right? Sure. Plants it in you. That's a burial. And then it's raised up unto new life and understanding so that you're born again. That is a what? A resurrection. That's what this is all about. Now the secret of his tabernacle is how he operates by this pattern. And you see it all the way through these lectures. So I want to just mention that because I want you to have a hope. The same hope that David had. 
and recognize that this pattern is essential. <coughs> and that's adequate. Thank you.